Okay. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Beaumont. Together we see a world where, where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Today, our invocation is going to be to, given to us by Kathleen Ossoff, Environment I'm Consultant at RSJ Consulting, LLC. Our pledges will be led by Josh Davis, Senior Director, Major Gifts, Legacy Community Health. Kathleen? You bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom of democracy in our nation that we live in. We ask you to fill us with your peace, and help our minds to be at rest after, through this election process. We ask you would grant us your wisdom and fill us with your love that we might overcome all that divides us. We pray for our president and all elected officials when we know them. Shed your grace and mercy on America that truth, liberty, and justice will prevail and the United States will always endure as one nation under God. Amen. Um, Cindy, I have not seen Josh Davis check in, and he's doing the so Okay, well, I'll, we'll just go ahead and get started. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, the of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice. and justice for all. Now our Texas flag, honor the Texas, the Texas flag. flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one, one state, state under God, God and under one one indivisible. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to club business, and Brad Brown is going to introduce two new members. It's, yes, thank you, Cindy. Uh, we're delighted to welcome two new members to our club. Uh, I want to introduce you first. You see her down in the screen. That's Amanda's iPhone, um, known to us as Amanda Ellis. Uh, Amanda is with Education First Credit Union. Uh, Amanda comes to our area um, from Longview, uh, recently moved, um, and so Amanda and I have one thing in common. She, Amanda says she's passionate about running a 5K. <laughs> I also am passionate, but not about running a 5K. So <laughs> we have things in common. Um, so. Amanda has volunteered uh, while she was in uh, Longview and many different nonprofits. Um, and uh, she's married to Lynn, who's uh, her, uh, is a coach, a teacher, and um, in Lumberton. So, uh, together they have five children wow. and one grandchild. So she enjoys the community aspect of volunteering and um, it's be great to welcome her to our club. And next time there's a 5K, find Amanda there. <laughs> Welcome, Amanda. I'm also privileged to introduce you to Denise McLean. Denise uh, comes from Lamarck. She's very familiar with the Rotary Club because she was a member while she was in Lamarck. Um, Denise is with a BISD. She's their community relations Ship manager there, um, and uh, Denise claims a friendship, and Nakisha Burns don't hold that against her. <laughs> <laughs> but she's <laughs> Denise is delightful uh, entry to our club. Um, Denise does admit to being PK. For all you don't know, that she's a preacher's kid, um, and she has. Uh, one son whose birthday is tomorrow. His name is Zach. And uh, so saying happy birthday to Zach. Uh, and uh, her husband is Carl. Um, Denise confesses to be a big time movie buff. 
and a trivia expert if you ever want one on 80s and 90s trivia about anything movie-wide. Did I, I told the truth, didn't I, Denise? Okay. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and uh, yes, and, and Denise is, um, looks forward to working with us in Beaumont Rotary Club. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Welcome, Denise. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome, Amanda and Denise, our club. We're so glad to have you. Now with an announcement about the flag project, Pat Anderson, past president. Yes, ma'am. Can, can you see me now? Can, can you hear me, Mandy? Mandy's always thinking I'm so quiet. I can hear okay. you. Good to see okay, you. Okay, I'm just making sure. Happy birthday, Mandy. Uh, I just want to say that uh, once again, our flag project will be the 11th, which is next Wednesday, Veterans Day. And our club, along with some nearly 500 members, of our flag distribution people will be honoring our veterans in the community. I'm about two thirds of the way filled with uh, people to put out the flag. So I need at least seven or eight more uh, if you can, uh, if you've got a few minutes or whatever uh, to get up in the morning, five o'clock and, and, and now, you know, it's kind of light. It's, it's good to get up and you're not, not so dark and you can put out the flags. And within the hour or so, because most of the flags take about an hour, uh, then you can go, you'll be all awake and alert, and ready to go to work, and get the day done. And so if you can help with that, and we're also offering for those who pick up the flags, the day before between five and six, you can come and pick up your flags that afternoon. And that way you'll be even further ahead of putting out your flags the next morning. So either let Jackie know, let me know, or Gary know, if you can help us next Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. Boy Scouts office, and we would be more glad to have you. And, and um, the new members, if you haven't done something like that before, it's like uh, Cindy was telling you earlier in orientation. You get a chance to meet people on a different level, uh, make new friends, and see a lot of different things that uh, what we do and uh, how much uh, people really like to put out the flag. So if you can help, please give me a call. Uh, don't make me start crying. You know, sometimes in the end, it got to where I had to do a little crying and, and I'm trying to hold my composure. So if you can help with flags, please let us know and appreciate all the work you've done in the past. And, and just remember this flag project supports all the many projects that we do for our club. So it's very important uh, that you um, come out and support that because there's a lot of things you can't do. You may not can build a the beds and the different things. But if you do the flag project, you support all our different projects that we do. So once again, thank you in advance and see you on Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. Thank you, thank Cindy. Thank you, Pat. Now to talk about a couple of more community service projects, John Lee, chair of our program or project committee. Good afternoon. Uh, last Saturday, we We've done a couple of projects with Sleep in Heavenly Peace and been able to um, actually build the beds, as Pat alluded to. But last Saturday, we had a team that went out and delivered some. So myself and Kevin Reed, Cindy Cherry, Tim Sedella, and Debbie Maxwell from the club, and then also Debbie's husband, Kevin's wife, and Lynn's husband, Chris Castle, who happens to be my next door neighbor. So, you know, I went grabby. Uh, so, we went out and actually really got the joy of being able to go out and build these beds, put them together at the people's home and give these kids a place to sleep. These two kids in the picture they're showing right there were sleeping on air mattresses and uh, did not have a bed, which is what most of these were. So it was a very rewarding, uh, fun time and we would love to be able to, we're gonna be doing this on a regular basis at least once a month and uh, we would love to have some other involvement from people. We now have people that are trained. So if I ask for you to be involved, you don't have to worry about going through the training. Uh, you'll be put with an experienced team member so that we can do this. And then upcoming, if you read your Rotary Gram, you'll know that we've got another project in the works. Uh, Sulphur, Louisiana was in the direct line of Hurricane Laura. Uh, Vincent Settlement Elementary School on the south side of Sulphur 
lost almost their entire roof off in the school. All the classrooms suffered some type of damage, wind damage, a lot of water damage. And if you've ever been in an elementary school classroom, uh, my wife taught elementary school for many years. And if you've ever been in one of those classrooms, they're so bright and welcoming. There's all kinds of things on the walls. There's, you know, bright colors and everything for the kids. There's rugs, there's cushions, there's all these things. And a lot of these things are supplied by the teachers. Over the years, they have accumulated a lot of things for their classroom. Anything that was wire soluble pretty much got ruined. Uh, you know, the plastic and the wood things they could, they could clean off, but everything else, including all those decorations and the things that the kids look at, are all gone. So things that teachers had accumulated over a number of years were gone in one fell swoop. So what we're asking for is donations. There are 19 total teachers at the elementary school and we're asking for donations so that we can get gift cards for those teachers so that they can go out and repurchase some of this material for their classrooms to make it a very welcoming learning environment. A lot of these kids are probably still living in homes that are partially there or have tarps on the roof or other things. And we want to at least give them a, a refuge for learning. So anything that you can do to help us out with this, we want to have these donations in by Friday the 13th. Um, the kids go back to school on the 16th, so we'd like to be able to go over and present these gift cards to the teachers at that time. I also got with the food bank with their school tools program, and they are going to donate a lot of school supplies from the school tools program for us to be able to bring over there. And then also Region 5 Education Service Center is canvassing all of the schools in their six county area and are gonna get donations of school supplies and possibly monetary gifts from those schools so that we can bring all that over there and show them that the Beaumont Rotary cares and we can help further our mission for the education of young people. So either contact myself, or contact Jack, Jackie, you can, if you, if you wanna get a gift card, please get like a Visa or a MasterCard gift card so that they can use this wherever they, they may, um, and you can drop those off with Jackie, or even better, if we could just really get a check or a cash donation, then what we'd really like to do is get 19 gift cards all the same amount that we can hand out to these teachers. So I know we've asked for a lot before, but we're asking once again, and anything that anybody can do to help, think about it. You've got a lot of kids that will really benefit. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now we're going to do our poll like we did last week. Uh, we're trying, the board is trying to make a decision as when the best time for us to get back to in-person meetings or hybrid meetings. So Jackie's going to put up a poll. Um, and just please take a little time to answer that. And I also want to make a comment on the Rotary Chorus. I read in the Rotary Grim, only six people have signed up for that. I am one of the six and I cannot sing good, y'all. I need a lot of good singing people in that chorus so he can really put my volume way, way down low so it sounds good. So please consider signing up for the Rotary Chorus. Perhaps for your own sakes, because if it's just me <laughs> that sounds so loud, it, it might not be so good. Yeah, I, I, I'm not into doing a sextet with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see, Cindy, I did, I did learn. I did learn that. Excuse me, I did learn from Lynn Hill that there's more than six now, but we can always enjoy having more people. Oh, well, thanks for making me nervous by putting that in the rotary gram. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay, so now, uh, before our speakers introduce, I wanna share a little story with you. When I first joined Rotary, I took them seriously about sitting at a different table every week. And so this particular week, I was sitting with Mayor Evelyn Lord, former Mayor Evelyn Lord. And it just happened to be district governor week. 
And she looked over at me and she said, uh, oh, it's the district governor. She said, usually they're old and boring, but this year is great. And it was Roger McCabe. She said, we have <laughs> a great one this year. He is so energetic. And, uh, and he was, and Roger was a great district governor. And I want to say too, that I haven't had an old boring district governor since I've been in the club. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know what you're going to hear from a Rotarian. <laughs> so now to introduce our young district governor, Becky Mason, I have coming up, Rebecca Maxwell, Director of Scholarships at Lamar University. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I'm very much honored and excited to introduce Becky Mason to you all, though she is no stranger to our club, and we are very proud and excited to have her as our district governor um, from our club again this year. I am going to read Becky's bio um, because especially for any new members to our club, I think you'll find some of her history and her experiences interesting and really shapes uh, where she is today. So following her graduation from Lamar University with a degree in elementary education, Becky actually taught first grade for several years before she started her own family. She then took a, a break for about a dozen years or so, during which she focused on her children, their school, and some local nonprofits. As many of us know, being a stay-at-home mom with kids is definitely a career in and of itself, um, and quite a challenge sometimes. But when Becky resumed her paid career, she focused on education in a different way, specifically in construction safety and training for the family business. So Mason Construction, along with some other companies working in the petrochemical industry, was experiencing a new emphasis on health and safety trainings that now has become very common. Becky's educational background was very helpful as she developed some award-winning programs at Mason Construction for the employees. Her commitment to the community has spanned several decades. Some of the organizations she has led include the Junior League, uh, Young Audiences, Women's Symphony League, and the Symphony of Southeast Texas Board, the Lamar University Friends of the Arts, the Lamar University Foundation Board, and of course, the Rotary Club of Beaumont. As you know, Becky loves all levels of Rotary, including the club, district, zone, and international levels. Uh, she and Chuck agree that Rotary has enriched their lives through lasting friendships, the ability to do good in our community and our world, and the joy of sharing the uh, spirit above self, uh, in the, the joy of sharing ser service above self, excuse me. Now, when I think about Becky, something I typically come back to when you think of our um, four-way test is, is it fair to all concerned? And as long as I know, have known Becky, I actually, a, a short story, I actually first met Becky in the Ambassadorial Scholars interview. And I, Chuck was also in that interview and I'd met him before, but I had never met Becky. And I remember being so intimidated by Becky in that interview in a good way because she was obviously very focused on, um, on what was best for the club, also what was best for me, but really making sure I understood the commitment I was making to an ambassadorial scholarship and the expectation that Rotary had for me as a scholar. So I remember leaving that interview thinking, Oh no, I hope she liked me. I mean, Chuck I've met, but I have never met Becky. And so we laugh about that today because um, I truly think she's a great friend and mentor and I lovingly call her my rotary mother. But Becky always comes back to the four-way test and especially, is it fair to all concerned? And I have seen time and again, where she really thinks about decisions that she has to make at leadership levels. Um, she really cares about the decisions she makes and the impact it has on others. And she continues to focus on, is it fair to all concerned? So I really respect that about Becky and how she lives that not only in her life, but uh, through all of her leadership levels within Rotary. So without further ado, please help me welcome Becky Mason. Wow, Rebecca, I'm not, I think I'll just say it. goodbye. <laughs> 
That was a really nice introduction. Thank you. I hope I don't cry. <laughs> Thank you all for letting me visit with you today and speak to the club. And uh, of course, like everybody else, I wish it was in person and at some point we'll be able to be back together and i look forward to that. And I'll enjoy if you let me stand at the podium one more time. Gosh, it's been a long time since I've been at a podium. Um, I want to first of all uh, say is Gig Langston on the call? Have you seen Jackie? Has he uh, logged in? I'm not, not saying today. Oh, okay. Past District Governor Gig Langston is a, a new member of our club. And uh, I was going to tease him and just say, we have to be careful now because once I'm a past governor, there's going to be four of us in the club, which may be a little dangerous, but we'll try our best to hold down the, the hot air that, <laughs> that we uh, spread around. So um, anyway, glad to have Gig in our club. I want to tell you um, my Rotary story, and some of you know parts of it, and, and many of you don't. But uh, Chuck, my husband Chuck, was uh, joined the club in the 80s, and um, he immediately jumped right in. And uh, they were going to have a service project, and they found out that he had a construction company, so they uh, incorrectly thought that he knew something about construction, but he did have big equipment. So uh, I think he was pretty popular with the service project people. And uh, so he participated in those a lot. And he just really, really got into Rotary and really loved it. And um, I wasn't particularly a big fan, I have to say. I was very involved with all my other stuff that I was doing and had young children. And uh, he was just so gung-ho about Rotary. And it was just like, uh, and um you know, he took the kids, you know, to some of the service projects sometimes, stuff like that. But it was, you know, I, I was not a, a very supportive spouse at that point. And he really, really kept trying to get me interested in Rotary, especially after women were allowed to be in the club and um, always wanted me to, to visit and all that. And I was just too busy. And so uh, when he was going to be president in 2000, he said, um, well, you might as well join because you're going to have to go to everything anyway, which doesn't that sound like Chuck Mason? And so I went and um, I was like, oh, Floyd, I need to talk to you about Symphony. And oh, uh, Sherry, I want to talk to you about something else. And then Joe, let's meet after the meeting. And it was it was like, wow, everybody's here. I can get so much done when I come to Rotary meetings. And I've, I had a completely different vision then of Rotary. And uh, so, you know, we, we got more involved with the, after he, when he was president, we started going to more meetings and more district activities. And then he was uh, governor in 07, 08. And um, so we just, we just started going to more zone meetings and international conventions and just met so many people from, around the district, around the state, the whole country. We have friends in other countries and because of Rotary. And so Rotary really has been a huge positive for our, um, for our, our whole lives because now we, we have friends all over the world and it's because of Rotary. And the theme that Rotary uh, had last year, which was Rotary Connects the World, that really resonated with me because of our experiences and all the people, really good friends that we made through Rotary. And uh, so all, those of you who have been in Rotary a while know that the, the RI president chooses a theme for the year. So um, as I said, last year's really was meaningful and I was really hopeful that the one for this year would be one that I could really relate to and use as, as I was talking to clubs and that kind of thing. So there we were in San Diego in January. And uh, so President-elect Holger jogs out onto the stage and very enthusiastically and then da-da, he, you know, here's the theme. And it was some doors and they're open doors. And it said, Rotary opens opportunities. And I went, hmm, okay. And it didn't quite click with me. And uh, so that day we spent the day going into breakout sessions with all the other governors elect. And, um, and we just really looked at it from a lot of different perspectives. And by the end of the day, I really did feel like it was something 
that we were, could really focus on and, and think about how Rotary opens opportunities. Let's think about for our community in Beaumont. What, what about what opportunities do we open for people in Beaumont? So an obvious one is the kids who are getting beds that didn't have beds before. That's the opportun an opportunity that you as Beaumont Rotarians have offered to the kids. And the students at Martin Elementary who get books from us each year, they have the opportunity to have books in their home where they can learn to read and practice reading because of the Rotary Club of Beaumont. And the work that you do with the food bank, those people who need, that don't have food to put on the table for their families, they have the opportunity of having it because of your work. And then of course, the one nearest and dearest to my heart is the playground, the, our Centennial Playground. And I can't tell you how many times we were down there and families would drive up with their disabled child and say, we used to have to drive to San Antonio in order for our daughter to be able to play on a playground. And now we can come here every week and she can play on this playground. So we have offered opportunities for people around our area in so many ways. And another opportunity is for singing. So I was gonna tell you that uh, Lynn told me right before the meeting that we had, I think 19 people signed up to sing. So Cindy, we got you covered, literally. <laughs> but any, we would love to have more people sing, the more the merrier. And uh, so please let Lynn Hill know if you would like to take a, a uh, advantage of that opportunity to get to sing for our, our holiday party. Let's think about other opportunities for members. So obvious opportunities are making connections and networking, just like I talked about when I first visited my first meeting, and it's still that way. That's where you go and you know you're going to see all your friends, the people that you're working on other projects with, and it's just always, it's always a charge to go and, and get to visit with people. And now, you know, we're doing it on, on Zoom and it's not as good, but um, I'm thankful we have the option to do this because if this had happened five or 10 years ago, I don't know what we would have done. And uh, so I think we've, we've learned ways to adapt and, um, and I'm thankful for that. Another opportunity that we, that we have as members of a Rotary Club is the satisfaction of serving others. When we, when we do those things, just like the satisfaction that I got when people would say how important the playground was to them, to their families. Um, wow, you, you just can't get anything better than that. And then another thing that, that opportunity that, that Rotary offers is leadership development. So if you serve on a committee or if you're a committee chair, an officer, whatever, you practice leadership skills, you watch other people and you put things into, into action. Um, and this year to encourage leadership development in our district, we're bringing a program called Rotary Leadership Institute into our district. And, um, and it's a three session deal and uh, where you learn a lot about Rotary and a lot about leadership. And our own Cindy Cherry has, attended all three of the sessions and you've graduated, right? Cindy, yes. And congratulations. And also Rebecca Maxwell and Deborah Drago have taken two sessions each. So congratulations to both of you. And it's open to anybody in the district who would like to participate. And now like everything else is virtual. In the past, it of course had been um, in person. And I'm, I would guess that probably going forward, they'll continue to have at least a hybrid option. So um, you, you can check out on the district website, rotary5910.org, a little bit more about the program or talk to Cindy or Rebecca or Deborah to find out their experiences. And when we have some dates set up, they'll be uh, posted on the, the district website. So you might wanna check, check those if you're thinking about it. And it's not just for people who wanna be an officer of a club or anything like that. It's just being, working on committees, working with people. Um, it's just a, it's a great opportunity. 
So let's move on to another opportunity that Rotary offers to us. And a very, very important one is the Rotary Foundation. Jackie, could you play that little video? The Rotary Foundation transforms our gifts into service projects that change lives both close to home and around the world. It was founded more than 100 years ago and it spent more than $4 billion on life-changing life sustainable projects. The mission of the Rotary Foundation is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill and peace through the improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. And someone said recently, they give, they don't give to the Rotary Foundation, they give through the Rotary Foundation. So our funds that we contribute go directly toward helping people around the world and close to home. As I'm sure you know, uh, Saturday, October 24th was World Polio Day. And, um, you know, why do we, why do we, why do we need to, eradicate polio. Well, it'll op improve lives, invest in the future, improve child health, lower health care costs, and make history. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but you can triple the impact that you make with your donations to polio eradication with the Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation match. So they match two to one. So a $25 contribution by a Rotarian would then become $75 worth of impact to polio eradication. So what could that buy? Well, 150 high visibility vests for health workers who vaccinate the children, 75 vaccine carriers to keep the vaccine cool and effective, and 600 purple markers for children's pinky finger that they mark to show that they've received the vaccine. And I have a really important announcement for you that I don't know that y'all realized, and I didn't realize it until Chuck told me just last week. In the past two years, our district 5910 has impacted the polio eradication efforts by over $2 million. So the funds that our 39 clubs in District 5910 have given, and then they've been matched two to one by the Gates Foundation, over $2 million. I'm blown away by that. And I thank you all for your participation in polio eradication and for your support. And Charity Navigator has given the Rotary Foundation the highest ranking for the 11th year in a row. So we can feel confident that the funds that we contribute are handled appropriately. This rating reflects Net Charity Navigator's assessment 
of how the foundation uses the donations, sustains its programs and services, and practices good governance and openness. So there are a lot of ways to give to the Rotary Foundation. And uh, there's one phrase called E-R-E-Y, every Rotarian every year. And there's a request that every Rotarian give some amount to the Rotary Foundation every year. And this year, we're really focusing in our district on regular ongoing support. There are lots of ways to give to the foundation, but regular ongoing support is very, very important to the operation of the foundation. Uh, there's also something else called sustaining members, and those are members who contribute $100 or more to the annual fund every year. So there's some really good ways to contribute and an easy way to make it happen is through Rotary Direct. That's where you go on to the rotary.org website and uh, you can sign up to participate in Rotary Direct. And you just say, you know, a credit card or a bank account, you say how much you would like to have deducted at whatever interval you want. So it can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever. It can be any amount that you choose whatever works for your budget. And the good thing about it is you can change it anytime. You have control of it. You can change it if you, if you decide you need to or want to. And five members of our club are currently participating in Rotary Direct. And I encourage more of you to consider it because you don't have to remember, oh, have I given a contribution yet to Rotary this year? It's just automatic. And again, you have control of it. You can always change it. And another way of supporting um, the foundation is through Paul Harris Fellowships. And many of you know, Paul Harris Fellowships are a way to acknowledge and honor Rotarians, family members, everyday heroes. Anyone who gives $1,000 to the foundation, or if somebody gives $1,000 in their name to the foundation, they'll be designated as Paul Harris Fellows. Our club has 271 Paul Harris Fellows and we have 86 multiple Paul Harris Fellows. That's impressive, congratulations. And today to recognize the good work that the club did this past year in spite of the challenges that were pre presented by, first of all, getting flooded out of our meeting place at the first part of the year, and then in the spring comes the pandemic. I'm awarding a Paul Harris Fellowship to your immediate past president, Joe Domino, Congratulations on leading this club and keeping it together. We're so proud of you, Joe, and we appreciate your dedication and your leadership in this past year. And Joe, you look a little startled there. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for leading us. And your, your pen and your certificate will be arriving soon and we'll get it to you then. So thank you again. Another thing I want to talk about is the Paul Harris Society. So we have Paul Harris Fellows, and then we also have the Paul Harris Society. So the Paul Harris Society is people who commit to give $1,000 a year as long as they're able. And an easy way to do it is through Rotary Direct. If you do $85 per month, that would get you to $1,000 per year and a membership in Paul Harris Society. And if that's something that speaks to your heart and would work with your budget, I'd encourage you to pursue it. And if you're interested, I'll be glad to talk to you about it. And our club currently has 12 members who are el eligible for Paul Harris Society. And if you're one of them and you haven't actually signed up for it, go on rotary.org and, and make your commitment. And again, it can be changed at any time. There's no Rotary police. Nobody's going to come and say you didn't give your money, you might get a, a nice reminder, but it's, it's up to you. You can do it for whatever works for you. Now I'm going to talk for a minute about membership and, and the Beaumont Club is doing great on membership and you continue to add, we continue to add new members um, in spite of what all is going on. Um, many of our clubs are really struggling with um, Excuse me, our phone is, <laughs> it'll go away in a second. Um, many of the clubs are really struggling with the uncertainty and you know people who 
either don't want to do Zoom or aren't comfortable going to meetings and, and all, all the challenges and, and all the uncertainty in our world and people's jobs and their families, everything's just kind of been upside down for a while. And so, you know, we still, we still carry on. We still find ways to, to be together um, in whatever way we can and to stay connected. And we still try to grow our clubs. So one of the ways to think about it is identifying what, what is our club's strength? What, what are our club's strengths? Um, why did we join? Why do we stay a member of the club? So I joined because of the networking and I stay because I've, I love it. And uh, people join for different reasons. And so we can identify what is it about our club that would be appealing to people that we know and who would be a good fit. Look around and see, you know, who, who do I know, family member, coworker, neighbor, whatever, who would be a good fit for our club and invite them to join a meeting. Um, and we just have to always stay on top of, of bringing in new members, bringing visitors and finding people again, that would be a good fit, but just as important, if not more important is keeping our members engaged so that we keep the members that we have. And again, during this pandemic, it's really a challenge to keep people engaged. And as I said, there are some people who are not comfortable with Zoom, they're not comfortable coming to a meeting. So maybe, maybe there's another way they could help. Maybe there's something they could do at home to help on one of the projects. Um, you know, if it's food bank, maybe gathering together some, some food or, or, you know, find ways that whenever the book bags for Martin Elementary, people could do that at home. They could put them into the bags themselves, find ways to keep people involved so that they, they still feel a part of the club. And I think that the virtual element is going to continue to be important to our clubs because there are people who don't join a Rotary Club because they know they can't get away long enough to drive to the meeting and, and have lunch and have a meeting and then drive back to work. Um, but with a, a virtual or a hybrid meeting, they can zoom in from their office and still be a participant. So uh, let's think about those kinds of things. Um, and I encourage you to get involved in district activities and um, right now everything's virtual, but at some point we'll go back to um, in person meetings, but again, I hope we'll continue to uh, keep the virtual element for those people who can't drive distances to go um, to meetings. Um, so what is the district? Our district is from the north, it's Palestine and around to Galveston. And then from the East Orange over to Ryan College Station. So it's about 250 to 300 miles each direction. So that, that's a, a pretty big geographic area. And so what does the district do? Well, what's the purpose of the district? The only purpose of the district is to provide resources and support for the clubs. So we offer the training opportunities. We just finished the Membership Foundation and Public Image series that we had. And they're always informative. You hear what other clubs are doing, you catch enthusiasm from the other clubs and the other people, and just gets kind of gets us recharged. Um, the district leadership is composed of experienced Rotarians from around the district who can offer guidance and assistance in their particular area. And again, if there's something that you're interested in being a part of on the district level, or if you don't know, just come to some of the meetings and and get acquainted with people and, and find out what's there, or I'd love to talk to you about what some of the opportunities are. Another thing that our district does is that we have a district website. Again, it's rotary5910.org, and our very own Jennifer Gregory is the one who is revamping it for us and trying to make it a source of information, a resource for us. She's doing a great job, and uh, it's, it's still in the process of being adapted and that's where you can find a lot of useful information plus we're trying to add other 
elements to it. One of the things right now you can take advantage of is the Speakers Bureau, which is listed um, on the website. And um, that's, uh, we, it was started back before the pandemic. So some of them say geographical area that, um, that a speaker would be willing to visit. And then now with the virtual elements, um, some of them are available by Zoom, some are available by pre-recording. So you might just check it out and see if there's something, if you're looking for a program for the club, um, just check it out and see what's there. We're also in the process of uh, compiling a list of service projects and fundraising projects and we're, that other clubs are doing so that we can learn from each other and share ideas. And we will post that on the district website whenever it's finished. And we're really focusing right now on projects, service and fundraising projects that can be adapted to the current health guidelines. So um, anyway, you'll, if you have ideas and suggestions on that, uh, you can talk to, to Jennifer about that or to me and uh, so that we can share our ideas with other clubs. Uh, Rotary.org is, um, the district, I mean, the uh, Rotary International website. And um, Rotary encourages all members to set up a login, to set up an account on the Rotary website. And about 30% of our members have done that. And uh, I encourage more people to do that. There's a lot of really good information on the Rotary website. One of them is uh, called the Rotary Showcase. And that's where you can see information about projects around the world is there's hundreds of them. And uh, a long time ago when we were moving from the I Like Me books to another liter literacy project, I went on the, the Rotary Showcase and was just blown away by the number of literacy projects that clubs do around the world. So um, there's some, some interesting information there. I encourage you to, to look at it if you have a chance. Um, there's also a Rotary Global Rewards Program, and you can get discounts on all kinds of things because of being a member of Rotary, and who doesn't like to get a discount, right? And then there's the Learning Center, and I know some of you have taken modules in the Learning Center. There, it's overwhelming almost because there's so many choices, but anything that you want to work on in Rotary, whether it's Youth Exchange or uh, or whatever, or if you're going to be a, a chairman of a committee or whatever, there's there's modules on uh, getting you ready for it. And so I encourage you when you, if it's a rainy day and you're looking for something to do, log onto the Rotary website and just see what all is there because it's there's a lot and a lot of really interesting things. And I'm going to end my talk today um, with something that I I didn't know that I learned on in the Learning Center. And um, a top priority for Rotary is growing and diversifying our membership to make sure we reflect the communities that we serve. And so we now have a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement as part of Rotary. And what they say, I'm just gonna read it to you. We're, we're creating an organization that's more open and inclusive, fair to all, builds goodwill and benefits our communities. We want people with differing perspectives and ideas who will help Rotary take action to create lasting change in communities around the world. Through Rotary, we find unique opportunities to get involved and everyone is welcome in Rotary. So I encourage you to look around at the membership and see if there are groups that are not represented, gender, racial, occupation, whatever. Thank you again for the opportunity to visit with you today. And I look forward to being back at the club on a regular basis very soon. So thank you. Thank you so much, Becky. Does anybody have any questions they would want to ask of Becky? Because we've got her on the spot. <laughs> I call it the stump the governor opportunity, <laughs> and somebody did stump me. Stump me. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't remember what, the, I guess I blocked it out. I don't remember what the question was. It was some off the wall. <laughs> well, the district is so much, um, there's just so much to it. And you can make some of the dearest friendships out of uh, people that you can meet around 
in our district. So thank you for all you do. We're so excited that your district got, we've been so excited about it for years that you were gonna be our district governor. And, and you have definitely taken on the challenges of this time and tried to uh, make it as the best that we could possibly make it. Um, in your honor, we are uh, going to be making a donation to the, through the Rotary Foundation. Um, and so that can do some good in the world. And that video was awesome. I, that was so, it just makes you so. Did it make you feel good? It makes you feel good knowing the good things that Rotary does around the world. And how and Cindy, it's, it's on the district website. If you want to okay, see it again. Yeah. Or show and, it. And also when you make the donation to the Rotary Foundation, uh, some of that comes back to our district uh, and where we can get grants and stuff from that. So you get you get a bang for your buck through the polio, and then you also get it just from donating through the Rotary Foundation. So we so appreciate you and uh, all the joy that you and Chuck bring to our club. And uh, we look forward to rounding out with a, hopefully a very good district conference <laughs> in April. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we can, uh, actually see each other in person somewhere <laughs> along the, along this year. But thank you again for joining us. Uh, remember to sign up for the Rotary Chorus. I know you feel better that there's 19 people in there now. Um, if we could make it about 40 or 50, that would even be better for me and your ears. Um, our speaker next week is going to be Jamie Smith, a United States Army veteran in our salute to veterans. And so what a great time for us to go put out flags that morning and then come home after, um, after we were just feeling all great for doing that and sit down and listen to Jamie Smith tell us some of his experiences as a veteran. So thank you for attending the meeting today and let's close out with our four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it, is it the truth? truth? Second, is it fair, fair to, all to all concerned? concerned. Third, will it build, will build good goodwill and better friendships? friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial, will it be beneficial to all concerned? concerned? Have a good week. Go out and find opportunities to lead and serve. Thank you all for being with us today. Great meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Floyd. It was great. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Good job. Thank you.